वेलकम व्यूवर्स एंड डियर लर्नर्स ऑन टू द समिट वी रीच द टॉप दिस आर्टिकल रिटन बाय तेनसिंग नोरगे इन आवर प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी लर्न अबाउट द जर्नी द वेन्चर एडमंड हिलरी एंड तेनसिंग नोरगे हैड इनिशिएटेड टू scale the summit of the mount everest when they actually reached what was their feeling that we can see here on on the screen in this picture we can see this couple or this partner edmund hillary and tensing norge their pleasant faces are clearly indicating how they actually might have felt when they could see themselves at the top of the world now let us see what was the first thought that came to tensing norge's mind when he actually could see his dream into fact my first thought on reaching the top was a sense of gratitude to god that after having failed six times he had blessed me with fulfillment of this desire i had held so long in this first paragraph the writer has given us a clear idea that he actually had a sense of gratitude towards god that shows that he was a tremendous believer in god after having failed six times this particular part of this line is giving us an idea rather a surprise that he made six successive attempts to scale the mount everest and he failed but after six attempts he did not lose his spirit and he continued it later on for the seventh time he succeeded in fulfilling his dream i placed on the summit the offerings to god that i had carried with me this is in accord with my religion it is our normal custom that whenever we fulfill our expectations or our so called dream we normally pay back in the form of thanks in the form of return gift or in the form of extending something as a mark of love as a mark of our respect or homage so as per the religion to which he belonged he did so both my wife and i are buddhists i could not kneel because of my clothes and equipment but i offered a silent prayer in my heart it is a observation that almost all the religions in the world they have some ways of offering their prayers tenzing norge was buddhist and he offered his prayer but silently what he did was that he wanted to kneel and offer his prayer but because of the equipment and the dress he put on he could not bow down so he remained silent he remained there standing but he offered his prayer and later on the offerings were biscuits candy and a little blue pencil when he reached the top he offered there one biscuit a candy and a little pencil that was blue in color my youngest daughter neema had given me the pencil before i left home when he was on his venture to scale the mount everest his youngest daughter her name is neema 
she had given him the pencil just as a token of love as well as offering for god she asked me to put it on the top of the mountain as her offering it was her request to her father that whenever he would reach he should not forget to offer the sense of gratitude and as a token of respect and love towards god by putting that small blue pencil there on the top of the world it was it was an ordinary blue pencil not even a long one but it was one of her prized possessions what you offer it is immaterial but if it is very close to your heart and if it is very important that is what is called as prized possession as i put it down i pointed it out to hillary he gave me a big smile showing that he understood when he offered that pencil tensing tried to explain it why he was offering that blue pencil there at the top of the world he tried to justify it and hillary uh, responded him that he had understood his emotions by giving a big smile on his face then i got out the flags which i had on piece of string about 4 feet long i fastened one end to my ice axe and hillary took pictures as i held it up as they had already planned so tensing and hillary unfurled the flags which they had planned to uh, unfurl there at the top of united nations organizations flag britons nepal's and the last one of india as i had to bring my ice axe down with me i buried one end of the string in the ice on the top and the other in snow on the slope down below when we left they were lying fla- flat against the summit so this way they celebrated their reaching the summit and later on they started back to their destination that is the base i was very thirsty i took out a water tumbler for a drink but found the water in the metal container had frozen so i couldn't quench my thirst i ate some biscuits and offered some to hillary here the word quench which is dark bold that means to satisfy one's thirst as his bottle was already frozen because it was a deadly cold there at the top of the world so it was really impossible to have water in a normal condition but they had the biscuits and uh, later on they started back i was wearing a red scarf which my great friend lambert leader of the 1952 swiss expedition had given me last year it was just a year ago on may 28th when we were standing at 28215 feet that he gave me the scarf he actually put on the scarf which was offered by lambert and lambert was the leader of the 1952 swiss expedition and he fastened it to his neck just as a mark of love attachment towards lambert probably he might have given the word that whenever he would scale the mountain would definitely put on that red scarf i wore it all the way up the mountain from darjeeling 
these small incidences are clearly giving us an idea that Tenzing Norgay took the very minutest things into notice and he followed them just to justify the emotions of whether of his daughter or even the leader of the earlier expedition that was of Lambert. I wore it all the way up the mountain from Darjeeling as I stood at the top. I remembered him and felt that he was with me. I felt absolutely fit at the summit. When they actually reached the summit or at the top, he was physically and mentally fit and fine. My mind was absolutely clear. I didn't feel tired. I felt exhilarated. The word exhilarated here, it means very happy. It was a very clear incident. Below all the hills and mountains looked like gods and goddesses to me. The plains below looked like so many broken pieces of the map. Uh, dear students, if any time you would have enjoyed the navigating there through the aircraft or even at the height when you actually look down, you see that the planes look wonderful, different colored patches and uh, uh, it seems like a portrait. So that was what he experienced there. Two or three people could stand there on the roof of the world if you cut ice. 20 or 30 feet below the top, there was enough flat square for two people to sleep. When they actually reached the top, there hardly a couple of people could, could stand. But even if somebody cut the ice, there uh, one could stand for more time. 20 or 30 feet below the top, there was enough flat square for two people to sleep. At the 30 feet below, there was one place where they could actually accommodate themselves and they could sleep. You could pitch one tent there. That was the sufficient space available for anybody who ever ventured to reach the summit. The summit is flat on one side and steep on the other. Uh, that is the very situation, geographical situation or ground situation which he has given us here. That at one side it was flat, at the other side there was a steepness. There is snow on the northern side, rocks on the south and the east and snowy rock on the west. In short, it was all snow clad. We stayed on the top a little more than 15 minutes. About 15 minutes they could see themselves at the top of the world. That was really next to heaven. We were lucky that there was no gale. Again the word gale which is in dark bold type. Gale means strong wind. We are more familiar with the word gale who is a popular cricketer or it would have swept us off. Uh, it is indeed a fortunate thing for the mountaineer Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary that when they had been there at the top of the world, they did not face any such strong wind or any such strong storm. It would have swept us off means if any um, such calamity would be there, probably that would be the end of their being. My next thought was, how to get it down safely. Dear students, if climbing up is a challenge, so is equally the challenge when you climb down. So he was thinking how to reach the uh, base that too without any, any accident or any mishap. On the descent from the summit, I was walking behind Hillary. I was following him and holding the rope tightly and my determination was to make sure he descended safely. I must say that the climb down was more difficult and dangerous than the climb up. If you slip down, you would go into Kangshung glacier and there would be no trace left of you. 
In this paragraph, we learned that Tenzing Norge was walking behind and Hillary was at ahead. And he gave us a clear idea that he wanted to reach the base safely. And here he has declared that climbing down was more difficult and dangerous than climbing up. So this is something uh, that we may not have your experience, but we got it. We got it there through this article that climbing up and climbing down both are challenging. But personal experience of Tenzing Norge says that climbing down is more challenging and dangerous than climbing up. If you slip down, you would go into the Kangsheng Glacier. That is the name of one particular place where if somebody slips. So there would be hardly any trace of their being. So that was such a huge risk they had while climbing down. Now the last part of this article, more caution needed. Of course it took less time climbing down, but you needed more hushyar or caution. When I reached camp 9, my first thought was, thank God we have been spared an accident and if up to now there have been no accidents i hope there will be no none in future i had always prayed to god and he had saved me of course here the writer who was a professional mountaineer he had the very skills and knowledge how to climb down but yet the chance of mishap was always there but when they started they were very cautious or in our colloquial language, hushyar means alert. When I reached the camp 9, my first thought was, thank God, whenever we achieve or receive something, and that too under the spell of high risk, so obviously we have to be always uh, concerned, and we have to always show or extend our thanks there to God, because it is the God's will that really survives us. I hope there will be uh, no accident in future because it is very will and the very experience at the same time the very spirit he had that had indicated that no accidents ever happened with him in the earlier expeditions and even in the present expedition. So he was very positive towards not happening any such mishaps in future too. I had always prayed to God and he had saved me. It shows that whosoever the fellow, one should always believe in God, believe in super power that may be hidden in the form of natural power or any uh, image that you have in your mind. At Camp 9, Hillary and I were in uh, no mood for any talking. We just attended to our own things. We stayed there about half an hour. We boiled some snow to make lemon water and drank it. When we left, we took only our sleeping bags and left everything else behind in the tent. From camp 9 to camp 8, where we spent the night, was an easier job. Just above camp 8, where the others could see us, it, sees, uh, it tells us that uh, how they started climbing down and when they actually reached the uh, camp 9, they were too exhausted and obviously they had a tremendous fatigue. So they had no uh, spirit to talk to each other. They just uh, did the basic things. We, they boiled some snow and make lemon water and drank it because they were already thirsty. After quenching their thirst, they just started, I mean, they put everything, they put everything there and they took only their sleeping bags and left everything there in the tent. From camp 9 to camp 8, where we spent the night, it means that their first halt was there at camp 8, was an easier job. It means it was comparatively more safe and uh, at the same time it was more comfortable place to uh, spend uh, to spend their night over there. 
just above camp 8 where others could see us it was such a location uh, which was uh, accessible or from the base anybody could see our activities just above camp 8 where the others could see us i raised my arm with my thumbs up noise and uh, loe saw us and uh, their faces flushed with joy in this way i was able to tell them of our success because you can see that anybody whoever is a part of your team they remain so keen to know the result of your attempts and while uh, they could see you they expected some physical or some uh, body language where through they could get a message so tensing norge just waved his hand and showed thumb that was an indication that they succeeded in their attempt so obviously being part of that team the uh, people who were known noise and loe uh, who were the part of that team they got overjoyed with this indication in this way i was able to tell them of our success as we got nearer to camp 8 loe came to meet us and came up about 300 feet with tea and coffee the other members of the team loe particularly he was so overjoyed and so much excited that he climbed up about 300 feet and that too with tea and coffee another 50 feet down we made noise who brought us some more tea again when they were climbing down at 50 feet uh, another member of their team that is noise who came with some tea this tea smelled kerosene apparently it had been made in a hurry and somehow some kerosene got into the welcome cup but i thought since the gentleman had taken so much trouble to bring it i was going to enjoy it whatever the smell it was in short it is nothing but the moment of joy in the moment of joy they got the tea which was smelling with kerosene it was just a matter of fun but they enjoyed it so this is how uh, Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary could reach the top of the world and this particular lesson I hope you have understood well if you have understood and like this video please mark like subscribe it and share it with your friends and relatives thank you